esta lesión es parte dos de los adiciones formulados. Los objetivos son use the tangent adición formula to simplify expresiones y verificar los trig identities son con nuevos estrategias involving the los adición formulares. Uh, today we're going to prove that the tangent of s plus t and the tangent of s minus t is one of our formulas that we've already shown, we've already proven this, so I actually want to begin with uh, you guys trying this on your own just to get some prove it notes practice. So what you're going to do is start with what you've already established in your previous uh, lesson, which was in the prove it notes. So let's start with the tangent of s plus t. Let's break that up into the sine of s plus t over the cosine of s plus t. And I want you to pause now and try this on your own. Okay, you're going to probably get stuck at some point, but that's okay. You're just practicing it. And then I want you to hit play when you get stuck and watch the rest of this. Okay? All right, so in our previous notes, we already proved that the sine of s plus t was the sine of s times the cosine of t plus the cosine of s times the sine of t. The cosine of s plus t was cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So this one's going to be cosine of s, cosine of t minus sine of s, sine of t. So maybe this is where you got stuck because you couldn't remember what to multiply by. Now in this case, you want to turn these back into tangents because you want to get your expression back into something with a tangent. So what we're going to do is multiply by 1 over the cosine of s times the cosine of t. And do that in the numerator as well as in the denominator. So it's 1 over the cosine s times cosine t over 1 over the cosine of s times the cosine of t. All right, so it kind of looks ugly right now, but it works out real nicely because now if I multiply to both of these parts here, uh, sine s, let's just show a little bit of this work here, sine s uh, multiplied by cosine, 1 over cosine s, cosine t, well that just turns into tangent times 1. So we have the tangent of s for my first term times 1, which is just tangent of s, and then here in the second term if I multiply this out I end up with tangent of t because the uh, cosine of s over cosine of s ends up being 1 too. All right, so that's my numerator. In the denominator, if I multiply this guy here, distribute that here, I end up with just 1 uh, minus sine of s times the sine of t over cosine s cosine t is going to be tangent s tangent t. And that, my friends, is what the tangent of s plus t is equivalent to. So the tangent of s plus t is the tangent of s plus tangent of t over 1 minus tangent s times tangent t. So now that we've proven this, we can use this formula here to uh, come up with the tangent of s minus t. So we'll start by writing the tangent of s minus t as the tangent of s plus negative t. So I'm just going to use substitution in here. So I, I have the tangent of s plus the tangent of negative t over 1 minus the tangent of s times the tangent of negative t. So the strategy here again is to use what you've already proven. Let me rewrite that a little bit nicer with just one parenthesis. So the strategy is to use what you've just proven. So because I've used, um, or because I've just proven this, now I can use that in expressing what the tangent of s minus t is. Um, so it's a little bit faster than having to go through all that proof that we just worked on before. All right, so now evaluating the inside, of, or this part here on the right hand side, uh, the tangent of s is going to stay tangent of s, but the tangent of negative t we learned in our opposite angle identities, this is negative tangent of t. Okay, um, And then we have 1 minus, this again is going to become negative tangent t, which is going to turn that into 1 plus the tangent of s times the tangent of t. And there is the tangent of s minus t. So just some extra practice with, with getting these, because uh, you will have to do this in your prove it test. All right, let's then just verify. Oh, look at that. This is exactly what we came up with for both of our tangent formulas. All right, now let's use that in problems 1 and 2 where it says to simplify the expression. So here I see the tangent of pi over 9 plus the tangent of 2 pi over 9 over 1 minus tangent of pi over 9 times the tangent of 2 pi over 9. So you'll have to be able to recognize this as its original here of tangent of, uh, basically we're looking at s and t split up, so pi over 9 plus 2 pi over 9. So this is equivalent to the tangent of 3 pi over 9, which is the tangent of pi over 3. 
and the tangent of pi over 3, you're going to take, uh, that's the high point right on the circle, so you're going to take the sine, which is the largest, so root 3 over 2, divide that by the cosine, which is going to be the smallest value, 1 half, and you end up with root 3. Okay, now in problem two, this is a little bit of review from actually yesterday's lesson. Um, you have to recognize this. You have cosine, cosine, sine, sine. That's the cosine, cosine, sine, sine one. So we're going to take the cosine of your first angle minus your second angle. And the reason why I'm saying minus is because of this sign here. So the sign changes, right? So that means in the original, it would have been alpha plus beta and then minus beta. So this, I guess you could put in parentheses. And then if we simplify this, that's really easy. The betas cancel and we have cosine of alpha. So this entire expression here is equivalent to the cosine of alpha. All right, now in problem three, we're going to be asked to do something very similar to what we did yesterday too in our lesson where I asked you to evaluate the cosine of like 105. So this is where we split up 105 into uh, the sum of two other angle measures that we were familiar with. Here we're going to do the same thing. Pi over 12 is not a value that we know. Um, it's not an angle measure we have memorized. So instead we're going to break that up and we're going to say the tangent of pi over 12 is equivalent to finding the tangent of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. Right? If I take pi over 3 and I subtract pi over 4, I end up with 1, one pi over 12. Or, sorry, <laughs> pi over 12. So now I'm going to use that tangent formula that we just uh, generated from above where I'm going to take the tangent of pi over 3 minus the tangent of pi over 4 over 1 plus the tangent of pi over 3 times the pi tangent of pi over 4. And now I'm just going to evaluate this. So in the numerator here, uh, we already evaluated above what the tangent of pi over 3 was. Remember, that was just root 3. So I'm going to steal that value that we already ev evaluated from before. And then the tangent of pi over 4 is really easy. That's root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2. So that just gives me 1. So I have root 3 minus 1. And in the denominator, I have 1 plus the tangent of pi over 3. We said was already root 3. And the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So this is my expression. Now, in your textbook, and I will also ask you to um, rationalize the denominator. So your textbook's answers will usually have the de denominator rationalized. So let's work on doing that, get some practice here. So um, what I want to do is create a difference of squares here. So I'm going to multiply by root 3 minus 1 in both the numerator and the denominator. Because I'm just switching the order here. Of root 3 plus 1 and, and using the conjugate of root 3 minus 1. All right, that will create a difference of squares in the denominator. And the reason why I'm using root 3 minus 1 as opposed to 1 minus root 3 is because I recognize that this is now that value squared. So this is equivalent to root 3 minus 1 squared over in the denominator 3 minus 1. Okay, when I create that difference of squares here, I end up with just 3 minus 1, which is nice because that just evaluates to 2. And then in the numerator here, if I FOIL this out, I end up with 3 minus 2 root 3 plus 1. So that gives me 4 minus 2 root 3 over 2, which will simplify to 2 minus root 3. And there is my final answer, which is what you would find in the back of your textbook. So if you left your answer like this, you might be very confused because it won't match your textbook. All right, I would like you guys to try number 4 on your own. So try me, please. Check with the key. Um, don't skip this. It is imperative that you practice these. Okay, look at how obsessed I am with you trying these. Okay, please try it and then check with the key. All right, next question here it says, given that the sine of a is equal to 4 fifths, where a is between uh, pi over 2 and pi, so it's in the second quadrant, and the cosine of b is negative root 2 over 5, and b here is in the third quadrant, Let's find the tangent of a plus b. So let's express what the tangent of a plus b is. The tangent of a plus b is the tangent of a plus the tangent of b over 1 minus the tangent of a times the tangent of b. So clearly we have a lot to figure out because all we're given is the sine and the cosine of b. Um, and we don't have the tangent of either a or b. So we have to figure that out. So let's work on that. Okay, underneath here, I'm going to draw a little triangle. And I'm going to place that triangle in, uh, let's see, in the second quadrant here. So I have A, the sine of A is 4 fifths, which means that the opposite side here is 4 and the hypotenuse is 5. 
This is a 345 triple. I don't even really need to use Pythagorean theorem here. Um, but uh, the cosine then of A is going to be negative 3 fifths because it's in the second quadrant here. So the cosine of A is negative 3 fifths. Now that helps me figure out what the tangent of A is because for the tangent of A, I take 4 fifths, the ratio of 4 fifths to negative 3 fifths, and I end up with negative 4 thirds. So here's the tangent of A. So I can make that substitution now for here and here. All that's left is the tangent of B. Now to find the tangent of B, let's move this up so you can see it. I'm going to do the same thing where I place a triangle inside uh, this grid here. And let's see, it's supposed to be in the third quadrant. So here I've got B. And the cosine is negative two, root 2 over 5, which means that the op adjacent side here, sorry, is root 2. Hypotenuse is 5. So here I can use Pythagorean theorem to find, let's call that A. So A squared plus root 2 squared equals 5 squared. And I end up with two possibilities. A is either positive or negative root 23. Now, because uh, it's really a side length, I'm going to just put root 23 here. But I can clearly see that that value is going to be negative, the sine. So the sine of B is negative root 23 over 5. Okay, so that's the, the sine of B. Now the tangent of B, tangent of B is going to be uh, negative root 23 fifths over the cosine, negative root 2 over 5. So this is ending, ending up going to be positive, but it's uh, root 23 over root 2, which if you were to rationalize the denominator here, uh, you end up with uh, root 46 over 2. Okay, so root 46 over 2. All right, so plugging all of this in now into this formula, we have negative 4 thirds plus root 46. Sorry, let me erase some of this if you don't mind. I'm just going to get rid of this guy and write the tangent of B here. Okay, so we have uh, the tangent of A plus the tangent of B. So in the numerator, I have negative 4 thirds plus root 46 over 2 over 1 minus tangent A is negative 4 thirds. Tangent B is root 46 over 2. All right. Ooh. Please try <coughs> and uh, simplify this fraction and check with the key, okay? We're going to move on now to numbers 6 and 7. Okay, so now that we've added a lot more identities to our prove it notes, now we can use these identities in trying to verify uh, further trig expressions and trig identities. So um, before, you probably would never have been able to do this question because when I look at the cosine of s minus t, I actually want to use the addition formula, which we didn't know prior to, you know, these past few days. So. I'm going to expand the left-hand side here. Please try to work on only one side of your trig identity, okay? So let's start with the cosine of s minus t. This is cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So this becomes the cosine of s times the cosine of t plus the sine of s times the sine of t. And then over the cosine of s times the sine of t. Now, I'm going to split this um, fraction up, actually into two separate fractions. So I'm going to write this as the cosine of s, the cosine of t, over cosine s, sine t, plus the sine of s, sine of t, over the cosine of s times the sine of t. So let's try to simplify this now. Well, I see here I have the cosine of s over the cosine of s, which will cancel. Cosine of s over sine of t becomes the cotangent of t, and sine of s over cosine s becomes the tangent of s, and sine of t over sine of t cancels. So I'm left with the cotangent of t plus the tangent of s, which is exactly what I was trying to prove. All right, I'd like you to finish off the lesson here by trying this one on your own. Um, I believe that this here has a typo in yours, so make sure that this says uh, sine of a minus b plus the sine of a plus b. All right, so go ahead and try to prove uh, this. Make sure you're using your addition formulas and just expanding. This should be a pretty easy one. You can go ahead and check with the key. All right, nice job. See you tomorrow in class.